Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Outstanding. Give me just a second to get ready here. I guess I should mute the YouTube. All right, YouTube is muted. All right, Alt. screen, I'll share this one. All right, so I should be sharing the screen now. I'm gonna guess that I am sharing the screen. Although I hadn't heard anyone respond. Yes. Perfect. I am sharing the screen. All right. Um, so we did the practice exam. Um, all of the other items in the class, the grades should be posted for those. Uh, so if you're missing a grade on something, or if you rated zero on that thing, it means that I didn't see that you handed it in. Um, since this term is special in so, so many ways. Um, again, I'm not going to take off points for any assignments being late. So if you want to go back and, uh, and make up one of those things that you've got a zero on right now, please feel free to go do that um, so that you could improve your grade from zero. But everything that had been submitted except for some of the CAM 5 assignments, I think about half of the CAM 5 things are graded. Um, so the, the final CAM assignment, I think about half of those are graded. Everything else you should have a grade for. Um, and please feel free to submit um, something if you had a zero on that. I just want to quickly go through the, uh, the, the practice quiz here and look at, look at the questions. Uh, overall, everybody did pretty well. Um, and this is my first time looking at it, um, but it looks like everybody had the right answer for that question. Measurement is important because understanding measurement, uncertainty, and metrology standards is important. Everybody got that right. Uh, manufacturing process variables, everybody got this one right. Uncertainty measurement relates to everybody's got it. Everybody's got it. So it looks like we did pretty well on the, the multiple choice questions. Got a couple people that answered RPM instead of SFM for the units for service speed. Um, so remember the service speed is the speed at which the, the cutting tool moves through the workpiece material. Um, almost everybody's got uh, this one correct here, quality question. And everybody's got this one right. In milling a pocket is a feature on a part. Uh, most everybody's got this one. Service speed at the center of a carbide end mill is zero because the radius is zero, right? Um, the designer is responsible for the art part of art to part. But most of you got the feed and turning. And so a lot of these are review questions. They were the same questions that were in the midterm uh, quiz and that we saw earlier. Everybody's doing okay. So this one, a couple of people got this wrong. What's the difference between precision and accuracy? So accuracy is closeness to the true value, whereas precision is closeness to the other values. Um, milling operations, spindle speed is 40. And so not, so now we're getting into the questions where not everybody got the same question, um, but it looks like most people can go, so milling speed, RPM, feed, axial depth, what's the material removal rate? 
So we need to be able to calculate a material removal rate. Um, we need to be able to go from spindle power to the friction on the rake face of the tool. And so you had to solve this problem in two steps, right? You had to take your estimated power and then you had to back calculate to find the, uh, the friction force. So about half of the people that got that question got it right. Um, and Could you show the problem so done out? In general, out. say again. I was wondering if you could show hey, hey. that problem um, step by lecture. Um, yeah, we can do that. If I don't get to it today, I'm going to be doing questions tomorrow at the lecture time. And so the purpose tomorrow is to go through those kind of questions. I just wanted to quickly go through the quiz today and then get on with okay, today's lecture. Uh, but, but in general, everybody did pretty well. Um, this one looks like about half the people got it right. So stock diameter. 0.75, you're going to turn to a final diameter, your feed rate is this, your spindle speed is this, and again, it's material removal. Well, I had help from a Chinese graduate student creating this question, so it's the materials removal rate, so the material removal rate. Um, customers willing to pay, everybody's going to do that one right. Um, just about everybody got this one. Wear resistance, all right. And so I'll make a point of, uh, of going through the questions that had significant people getting it wrong tomorrow when we go to the, to the, the question review. Um, Just a sec. Thank you, Siri, I don't need any help right now. Okay, it's another one, 50-50. Feed rate, material removal rate, and what's the power at the edge of the cutting tool. And so this one was, look it up, so there's only two people got the question. So one person got it right, one person got it wrong. Uh, facing operation on lathe, okay. All right, so uh, the, uh, the, the quiz looks good. I, I looked at the, the overall grades for the class. It looks like everybody's doing well in the class, so I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned about anybody that has been trying to, uh, to, to finish up the class. Um, so I'd like to move on with, uh, with today's lecture. And yeah, so I'm gonna change my screen share. Share computer audio, share. All right, so you guys should all see a different screen now, right? I'm gonna go with yes. Can you just see the quiz on yeah. the screen? You still see the quiz on the screen? There we That's go. That's weird because it says to me oh, no, I see that you're seeing something else. Okay. Are you you're on Zoom then on YouTube? Okay. There's a there's a delay on the YouTube side, but it should be live on Zoom. All right. Everybody sees the PowerPoint. How did doctors kill people? It's my question for the class. As a One at a time. As a so somebody said one at a time. What's the, so somebody said one at a time. So how did doctors kill people? What are the mechanisms? Hopefully by accident. Hopefully by accident. Okay, what kind of things could cause it? Malpractice. Malpractice. Malfunction or uh, 
All right, so malpractice is what the lawyers would call it, but but what is it that causes it? They mess up. No, All right, so they mess up. They make mistakes. What are some specific mistakes we might get? Anybody? It's diagnosed wrong. So a misdiagnosis, that would do it. So if you treat me for the wrong illness, it might kill me. What else could happen? A surgeon can nick an artery. So a surgeon doing a surgery, they could nick an artery, and they could fail to be able to, uh, to close the wound, and you could bleed out during surgery. How else could a doctor kill you? They could just prescribe their own drugs, right? So but, but typically doctors kill people in a case by case basis, right? And I think the first person that responded said doctors kill people one at a time. So how do engineers kill people? By the hundreds. By the hundreds, by the thousands, potentially, right? So who's who's responsible? Can you guys hear the audio from the video? Oh, no, it's muted. There you go. Now you can hear the audio. Let's listen to the first few minutes here of the video. In 1968, at the height of the war in Vietnam, 14,000 Americans were killed and 46,000 were wounded. That same year, another 14,000 Americans were killed. But those lives were lost right here in the United States because those American men and women were killed at work, on the job. Another two and one half million American workers suffered disabling injuries. That's Vietnam that year. Right, the subcommittee will be in order. Now, this morning, we're continuing with our oversight hearing to the occupational safety and health. In an effort to stem this tide of injury, disease, and death, this morning, Congress created the Occupational Safety and Health Administration in 1970. In creating OSHA, Congress affirm the right of every working man and woman to safe and healthful working conditions. They have not only the right to expect, it's the law that, that they should be able to go to their work in the morning, give the employer so many hours. So did you guys get that? Yes. The numbers. Yeah. So 1969, sorry, 1968, 14,000 Americans killed in action in Vietnam, 46,000 wounded. And at the same time, in industrial accidents, 14,000 Americans killed and 2.5 million injured. 54 times the number of people that were wounded in the war. And so this, this it made the news. And, and when it makes the news, then it gets people like Congress interested. And so they, they had to try to figure out something to do so that we would stop killing our industrial workers. And so has anybody in the class had an interaction with OSHA before? Have any of you guys had an interaction with OSHA? We open up the I've chat in case somebody say it there. You've done OSHA training. So why did you do the OSHA training? Because it was mandatory in my high school. It was mandatory in your high school. 
All right. Anybody else had any interaction with OSHA? Who was it that said they did training? It was Lucas, right? All right. I'll be yeah. calling on you for lots of answers now. Oh, that doesn't mean so who else has had an interaction with OSHA? That's all right. So did you know that um, that all these paycheck protection loans that everybody's talking about on the news, you guys heard about that? So if you if you uh, if you have a company and you've kept your people working and you've kept paying them, you get the paycheck protection loans. And if you if you keep all your people employed for a certain amount of time, that loan is forgiven. So it becomes a grant. You never have to pay it back. That's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool way for the government to help businesses get through the COVID crisis here. Did you know that there's a clause in the loan agreement that says you are subject for extra OSHA inspections? And if they find any violations in your workplace, the loan will not be forgiven. I learned that this morning. So, so nobody in the class has, has worked at a place where they had to interact with OSHA other than Lucas taking the, the exam in uh, or the, the training in high school. I had trainings for an internship with Pratt. All right, so Van had training for an internship with Pratt. So Lucas had training, Van had training, anybody else? Because by the time I was at WPI as a student, I'd had plenty of interactions with OSHA, either direct or indirect. Uh, it's because I worked summer jobs when I was in high school and in college on construction sites. And so we, we see OSHA often, in fact, the last uh, the opt-in was of a construction site. And, and we see OSHA often in those scenarios coming in. In fact, there's a company I worked for. It was the summer after my junior year, the summer, uh, summer after my sophomore year, I think it was. No, because junior year, I went to Sweden. So it was the summer after I got back from Sweden. So the summer after my junior year, I was working on a, at a company. We were building a bridge. It was a highway bridge um, and um, on Route 100 in uh, Waterbury, Vermont, if anybody cares. It was the bridge at one end of town. It was it's actually, it's kind of cool because the, there was a restaurant next to there called The Feed Bag. If you were coming into town and you saw the cop car at the feed bag, you knew you were home free the rest of the way through town. So, so that, was, that was kind of a funny story about that. But the, uh, the first day I got on that job site, I wasn't involved, but uh, OSHA wrote a $10,000 fine to the construction company before the inspector got out of his car. He drove up on the site and he had written the first $10,000 worth of fines before he got out of his car. And it was for watching a person ride up out of a hole in the bucket of a backhoe. It was, was it a good idea? OSHA finds not considered. Was it a good idea to stand in the bucket of a backhoe and ride up out of the hole? Definitely not. Perhaps not. Definitely not. It's kind of it's kind of easy to say this. So why did the guy do it? Because it was convenient. He was probably goofing it was around. convenient. He was probably goofing around. Easier to get out. It was easier than climbing out of the hole. Yeah, whose fault is it that the company got a ten thousand dollar fine? Site manager. The whole guy. The manager. The guy in the hall. The guy in the backhoe. Everybody standing around. It's everybody's fault, right? There's nobody free from blame here. So the management should have established a culture of safety, 
So the guy didn't think of writing out of the hole. It was, it was actually more complicated than just a backhoe bucket. He never should have been in the hole. It was too small for a person to be in without special uh, um, special forms and everything down along the side. So it was even worse than riding up out of the hole in the backhoe. So, all right, so my, my father, he's, he, he worked in construction for a long time and he would come home from work and I would hear about this when I was a kid at the, at the kitchen table. And he would say, that damn OSHA inspector, he sat there and he counted all day long how many people went up and down that ladder. And we had one too many people use that ladder and that meant we should have had a stairway. And so he wrote us a big fine because we didn't build a stairway there, we used a ladder by one person. He said, and he went around and he counted all the extension cords and we had too many extension cords. And um, so, is OSHA a good thing or a bad thing? Depends who you ask. Depends on your viewpoint. Depends who you ask. Why would it be a bad thing? Costs money. This cost. Okay. Why would it be a good thing? There's a reason for the cost, though. What's What's the purpose of OSHA? We got it from the video or somebody that did training, Lucas. Why does OSHA exist? To prevent injury for any employees on a job site to protect the people working to protect the workers on the job site also to that protect sounds like the a noble people cost. using whatever you construct so protecting the the users of different pieces of equipment you said madeline yeah it's a good thing for, uh, so yeah. somebody posted in the chat group, it's a good thing for preventing work safety issues. Um, Nixon, Nixon signed it into law, so that's immediately sus. I guess sus is suspect. I'm not up on chat speak, but it sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how could, how could protecting the safety of workers be a bad thing? From the silence of the group, Rules I'm going to assume that we believe that the protecting the protecting the safety. I had. Could you repeat that? I had a hard time hearing. To protect it, because depends how they do it. Okay, so it could be something about implementation that like, that makes it more contentious or something like that. But but in in reality, it was signed in by Nixon. OSHA so is there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's old. Um, I, no, somebody, yeah. somebody so posted like, capitalism some of the things might be outdated. Else. Else. Anything might be that costs more money makes it bad. So what's the cost of killing your employees? Is it money. higher or lower than paying the fine? It's priceless. So some, some somebody said priceless, yeah. So um, it should be higher. So I have a I have a friend who owns a company. That, a um, they, they, the company has been in business since the uh, the early 1900s, and they were a machine tool manufacturer, and uh, and they have machines that have been in the field since the early 1900s that still function but they get sent back to the factory for repair and refurbishment. And so when it comes back, if it was made in 1920 and it comes back and is being sent back out to the customer in 2020, would you believe that the OSHA regulations for guarding on industrial equipment have changed between 1920 and 2020? I'm just gonna say from yes. the nods, I'm gonna say, yes, you believe that. So 
he, he and my my friend sort of jokes about it. He says, uh, "Yeah, back in 1920, when a guy lost an arm, you got a new guy, but you can't go get a new guy when a guy loses an arm in 1920." And, and so our perception of it has changed, but but in reality, we as engineers, we've got to be protecting our uh, the people that use our our equipment, the people that um, we work with, and safety is everybody's responsibility. And it's the person who sees it and has a chance to stop it who's at fault when uh, when something goes wrong. So the, the focus of today's lecture, I'm going to go back to the screen share. I think, if I can remember how. I want the, this one. So the focus of today's lecture is to talk about safety systems. So we said that engineers are capable of killing people by the thousands. Um, and so, but we don't want to, right? What is the, uh, anybody know what is the, the first canon of ethics for the American Society of uh, Mechanical Engineers? I know one person knows what it is. And if you guys had been going to class in Washburn all term, you would know what it is too, because it's stenciled on the wall of the stairs as you're leaving the laboratory. Professor Brown, would you like to share with us the first canon of ethics for engineers? Uh, hold yeah. paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. Hold paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public. Does that sound like a pretty good canon to you guys? Yeah. I, yeah. I have to add, I think this should have been a caveat when they created that. It should have been our public not the public, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to build bombs to drop on other people. And engineering is important for making bombs. But if we assume that we're going to stop building bombs and stop dropping them on other people, then I think we can go with the public instead of our public. So if we're going to hold paramount the safety of the public, we've got to be able to safely design equipment so most of you, I, I'm assuming, most of you think that you're gonna have a career where you go out and you work in companies that make something and you may be working on the design side, you may be working on the manufacturing side. So today I wanna to focus on how do we design something so that it won't harm the public. And by the public, I mean the public at large. So we don't want the chemical plant that we've built to have a catastrophic leak and kill thousands of people around the plant, right? We don't want that to happen. We also don't want the drill press that we designed and built to have a minor flaw that causes the person operating it to have to go get stitches. So we don't wanna have any of those things happen. And so what is it that hurts people? What are the uh, what is the what is the safety system first? It's easy to it's easy to write the to write the word safety system. What is a safety system? Procedures and guidelines that are meant to keep people safe. So it's the, it's the collection of everything we use to keep the people safe. All right, so our equipment could have a safety system. Our laboratory space could have a safety system. Our highways could have a safety system. Um, our vehicles that we drive in can have a safety system. So safety systems can be 
in any different range of places here. So a safety system is the collection of tools and policies to ensure So I'm going to switch off the screen share for a second. Is it on or off? Is the screen share on or off? Off. Uh. Off. Okay, perfect. So the safety system is collection of tools, policies to ensure the safety of everyone. All right. So. If we want to ensure safety, what's the first thing we have to understand? So if I want to ensure safety, what do I have to understand? What could cause harm to the people? What could cause harm? Workers? All right, so we could look at a chemical plant and think of what could cause harm in a chemical plant, or we could look at a, a nuclear power plant and think about what could cause harm there. But that's not what this class was mostly about. So let's think about a machine shop. So a lab like the one that you're going to be able to come back to in the fall at WPI and make all the cool parts that you wanted to make all this term. So what could cause harm to a person in a machine shop? The, the first item on my job description, my job description has 19 items on it. One third of one of those items is to teach this class. The first item is to ensure the safe operation of the manufacturing laboratories. So if we're gonna ensure the safe operation of the manufacturing laboratories, what could harm people in the lab? Something could get in somebody's, someone's eye. So, Debris can get in somebody's eyes, so flying debris. <laughs> flying debris can hurt me. What else can hurt me in the lab? Work piece could come loose and hit someone. Flying. Flying work piece, which I would classify as different from debris. What else could hurt someone? Sure. If you One stick your hand in something rotating. Rotating equipment. Uh, somebody said sharp things. What else could hurt me? Uh, not focusing. Blurry vision, you mean? So, so lack of focus. I think I know what you mean. What else could hurt me? Or cause me to get hurt? So flying debris, flying workpiece. I'm going to just go ahead and put tool there, because it could be the tool that flies instead of the workpiece that flies. Rotating equipment. Say again? Loose clothing. Loose clothing. So loose clothing is especially problematic around rotating equipment, right? Yeah. Sometimes excessive you guys, sound. You guys, all did the, uh, you guys all did the lab safety quiz, right? The way back at the beginning? Yeah. And you, so you had to read the laboratory policies there. And a couple of years ago, I, I rewrote them, not so much for content, but for grammatical correctness. And, and I was in a very, I was in a very positive place in my life when I rewrote them. I didn't want to use any negative terms. And so instead of saying, don't wear loose clothing, I said, wear tight fitting clothing. 
if every time I typed that or wrote it down, every time the 13 year old boy in my mind came up and I giggled a little bit. So avoid loose clothing. What else? What else? So what could hurt me? So avoiding loose clothing could keep me out of the rotating equipment. But what else happens in a machine shop that could cause me to be hurt? Check the chat. Nobody's in the chat. One new message in the chat. Uh, sound can sometimes damage your ears. Too. Oh, sound is a problem. Actually, sound is a big problem in the machine shop. I have notch hearing loss in both ears. And so that means that there's a certain frequency that I can't hear. Conveniently or inconveniently, it's at about the tone that my daughter uses when she whines. Um, it's also the same frequency of the spindle on a Haas mini mill at 6,000 RPM. And there's three of those on the other side of the wall from my office. And they always run at 6,000 RPM. Quick pop quiz. Why do they always run at 6,000 RPM? Because that's their max RPM. Because that's as fast as they go and we usually cut aluminum. And when we want to cut aluminum, we want to spin the spindle as fast as we can because the tools are better than the machines. Okay, but sound, lack of focus. So lack of focus can cause all kinds of things, right? Uh, I think there's a big one that's missing here. Has anybody ever used a bench grinder or like a right angle grinder on steel? Yes. Yeah, what do you see when you use a right angle grinder on steel? Sparks. A shower of sparks going in a direction. Usually, usually it makes a nice arc and you get a shower of sparks, right? Um, what do sparks do? Fire. Has anybody in the class ever caught themselves on fire using a grinder? I have. I was working on a part, I don't know, I was fixing an old car and my truck was backed into the garage and the workbench and the bench grinder and I'm wedging myself between the truck and the workbench and I got my part and I'm going on the grinder. And so the sparks fly straight at you on that situation. And they were hitting me in the chest and my chest was warming up, but that was normal because there was sparks flying at my chest. I finished. And I turned off the grinder and my chest was continuing to get warmer. And I looked down and my shirt was on fire. So I had lack of focus, right? Lack of focus and fire. Um, so we got fire, flying debris, rotating equipment, sharp things, lack of focus, sound, Anything else that comes to mind? It might hurt you in the uh, in the machine shop. Well, if you're welding, you can damage your eyes uh, from welding. So bright light. What else could hurt us in a machine shop? If there's debris or objects lying around, they can be a tripping hazard. Tripping. An average height adult, if you trip and fall to the concrete floor and hit your head on the concrete floor, if you're of average height and weight, there's enough energy in your head when it suddenly impacts the floor to kill you. Do we have a quiz question about energy? On the practice quiz? Yes. It was about the energy of a uh, chuck key accidentally left in the chuck leaving the jaws. Right. I thought that I thought that question was on the practice test. And how much energy was it? Anybody remember? We could we could answer that with enough. But it was enough energy in that chuck key when it hit you in the forehead to kill you. 
we want to avoid that, right? Because it was whole paramount something about safety in public and we're part of the public. So if these are the things that we think can hurt us in a machine shop, I think we left out high pressure air. But since you guys weren't actually in the machine shop, you probably didn't experience that. So I'll, I'll give you a high pressure air. We also left out chemical. And somebody said tripping or slipping. <clears throat> so these, I think, are probably the primary ways that we're going to get hurt in a machine shop. If we want to protect against these things, what's the next step once we list the potential hazards? Identify ways so, to avoid the hazards. All right, so we could think of ways to avoid the hazards. Let me see. I want to. <laughs> Siri, you are on like hyper alert today. What? Well, no, but you can't actually help me, and I don't know why you keep turning on. Well, that shut her right up. Um, so we, we list the hazards. And then we want to avoid the hazards, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. So if we want to avoid the hazards, what, what kind of things do we do to avoid the hazards? What are the tools we could use to avoid hazards in a machine shop? Or, not, I mean, now that we've got our list of hazards, it really doesn't matter if it's a machine shop or not. What are the, what are the kind of tools that we could use to avoid hazards? Require personal protective equipment that's so appropriate for... PPE. Personal protective equipment. We all know about PPE these days because that's what they talk about on the news. So avoid, we want to avoid hazards with PPE. How else can we avoid hazards? It is, how does, how does the PPE avoid the hazard? It prevents you from come into the situation where you would get injured like it, pre it prevents uh, debris from getting into your eyes it prevents you from slipping from wearing slip resistant shoes so it, it impedes the propagation of the thing if it's if it's safety glasses keeping the debris from hitting you in the eyes or fire retardant so i've got my safety glasses protection. on right now but they're protecting my forehead now they protect my eyes right mm -hmm. yeah I've made a lot of videos um, to try to educate people in the machine shop. And the first video I made, it was a welcome to the Washburn shops kind of a thing, sort of a safety training kind of a thing. I was standing in front of one of the Haas lathes. I had the camera set up. I was standing there like this and I said, and welcome to the Washburn shop. So I want to talk to you today about safety. And that's when I realized that my safety glasses were on my forehead. And the first thing I want to tell you is, when they're up here, they protect your forehead. And if you put them down here, they protect your eyes. So I rolled with it, but all right. So PPE, that, 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 that mitigates or it stops the propagation of the hazard towards me. Um, what other kinds of, so somebody said like non-slip soles on your shoes will keep you from slipping on a greasy floor perhaps if you're in a shop that has a greasy floor. But to avoid that slipping hazard, you could make sure that the floor is always clean also, right? Yeah. So the better way to avoid that slipping hazard is to get it before you get to PPE. What else could we do to keep the hazards from hurting us besides PPE? Educating the workers. Education. So education might be the most important one, although I don't know. So besides PPE, how can we keep the stuff from hitting me in the eye? Automation. Uh, say it again. Automation. Oh, we could remove me from the workplace. I mean, next term, they don't actually have to have a professor to do M1800. They could just play these videos, right? 
So, but you could use, so you remove the person from the hazard. So you, you move the person away from the hazard. Hey, I've been thinking about adding a segment on automation to M1800. Would that be a good thing? Answer in the poll. Or not in the poll, but in the participants thing. Would adding a segment on automation to M1800 be good? All right, 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah. It seems like nobody's saying no. The people that are answering are saying yes. All right, so I'll email out when we do the, the uh, A-term uh, lectures on automation. I'll email you guys that stuff so you can learn about it too. Um, so we have PPE, we have education. Uh, we could get the person away to avoid the hazard. What else could we do to keep the hazard from hurting the person? Put a barrier between the person and the so put a barrier. operating. Bear, I, E, R, I can't really spell barrier. How about we call it a guard? <clears throat> we'll put a guard, a barrier, a shield to keep the thing from getting to me. What else could we do? What else do we see in safety systems? What else? Gabby said signage. We can put up signage. Has anybody ever seen cool safety signs? Now that gets to education. I don't know if you've mentioned it, but I know there are some parts in Washburn that have like the laser like if you cross the laser, it stops. Yeah, so so that's sort of like a barrier, right? And so we have like around our automated equipment. So the problem with automated equipment is it doesn't necessarily know if you're there. And so it could hurt you. Um, and so we use a laser light fence. One option is laser light engines on industrial rain Salem. Do you want that one? Sure, Siri. Just tell me what you'd like to do. Siri, go to sleep. Siri never sleeps. It, it, there's a button. If I press and hold it, it turns off the iPad, right? Yeah. <laughs> that Siri never sleeps thing was like some Skynet stuff. <laughs> Siri has gone to sleep. Unless she wakes up on my watch or my phone. Um, laser light fence, all right, guarding, shielding, signage, education. So, so the first thing we want to do is we want to list the hazards, right? We want to know what the hazards are. Then we want to figure out, can we eliminate what we, we said avoid, but avoid is, can be eliminate. And that might be by moving the person out by getting automation. It might be, so with, with my uh, safe operation of the manufacturing laboratories at WPI, I could say, I could have the laboratories be safe by locking the door. And in fact, the labs are pretty safe right now for all of us because none of us have access right now. But it, it doesn't allow us to operate. So we can eliminate the hazard by removing it completely, saying we don't need to do this anymore. We could avoid the hazard with education, PPE, barriers, guards, and shields, signage to remind us about it. A lot of times the signage is there to supplement the education. The sign doesn't mean much if you don't have the education. Um, put up protective guards around machines. <coughs> Since I've been involved in, in operating the labs at WPI, we've had three or four people get stitches. 
Um, we've had in every, uh, we've had actually this year. Oh, that's bad because this year wasn't even a full year. This year we had two, well, three, but one of them was two fingers on the same person. Three broken fingers. Um, all of these things we've investigated and we've analyzed to try to figure it out. Um, one incident was a chuck key in a drill chuck in a um, drill press. That was 26 stitches, sorry, no, that was 22 stitches from here to here on the girl's right hand. Um, I waited with her in the uh, in the emergency room. Now it happened at uh, eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. I wasn't there, uh, but I get a call from campus police. I mean, when I get the caller ID and it's campus police and it's the middle of the night, I do not want to answer that call. Um, but I waited with her for her mother to arrive at the emergency room. She had to drive down from upstate New York, and uh, and she said, "I'm a little bit nervous because usually my father takes me to the emergency room." I thought, wow, this person has a usually with emergency rooms. Uh, another one was stitches. There's 26 stitches. It was here. And um, that was from lack of focus. Um, he turned around and bumped his elbow on the corner of a uh, machine tool. And, and so we thought, well, we could either wrap him with foam or we could wrap all the machines with foam. Oh, the, the drill chuck thing. We don't have any drill chuck keys that could be left in drill chucks anymore. They, they're, well, whatever ones we could find, um, when she got back to campus, she welded them into a statue uh, to fix that from happening again. Um, but, uh, but there are serious, serious things. There's a, um, oh, I don't want to end on a sad note. Never mind, you guys can look through the slides if you want to find the sad note in the slides. Um, so I'm going to uh, make the, uh, as we go offline here, I'm going to make the final exam live. Tomorrow at this time, I'm going to do questions about the exam. So there's something you can't figure out how to solve. I can help you work it out. Um, and I think all of your grades are up and posted. If anybody wants to stick around to watch a YouTube video, rather than a sad note, I've got a fun YouTube video for you. What time will the exam be posted tomorrow? Uh, I'm posting it uh, as soon as we're done here. It's all ready to go. Is there a time limit once we open it? Nope, no time limit. Uh, I'm gonna do two attempts um if you need if you've got a a burning need for an additional attempt um you can reach out to me the best thing to do would be to text me um because i'll get that most quickly uh let's see youtube All right, let me go to screen sharing. Screen share thing is defeating me today. You guys can't see the screen yet, right? No. No. Oh. Also, the slide that you have linked on the week seven 
uh, page are the slides from last week, the design for manufacturability. Yeah, I'll fix that. Yeah, I was copying last week's when I uh, when I set that up. That's my bad. Now you should be able to see the screen, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. I will leave you with this note. Talk to you about my grade. Oh, hello. I'm just on my lunch break. Yes, but I really need to talk to you about my grade in your class. Okay. I will wait to eat my lunch, even though it's four o'clock and I have been so teaching classes all day and had two me department grade, meetings and office hours and not week. had a chance to eat or even Rather pee. Waiting until the what can I do term? for you? I'm worried about because my grade in your class. Week, but I I'm worried I that I might not be passing your class. Am I passing your class? Well, I don't carry my grad book with me to lunch, so I can't say exactly. What grade did you get on your first essay? I got a D. Did you revise it for a better grade? No, I did not. What grade did you get on the second essay? I also got a D on that one. Did you attempt to revise that one for a better grade? No, I did not. Am I passing your class? What grades did you get on essays 3 and 4? I got a C- minus on one and a D on the other. Out of the 12 homework assignments, how many did you turn in? I believe I turned 3 of them in. Why only 3? There was one I meant to turn in, but I didn't understand how to do the assignment. Did you ask me for help or clarification? No. Did you see one of the tutors in the writing lab for help? No I did not. Did you use one of your late passes to get more time guys, to work it on it? No. What about the other homework assignments that you failed to turn in? My stapler ran out of staples. Am I passing your class? How many absences did you have this semester? I only missed four classes. Four is the maximum number of classes you can miss before you get dropped or fail the course. Oh good, I only missed four. Can I have extra credit for not missing more than four? What? No. You should not miss any classes, but if you have two, four is the most you can miss before incurring serious penalties. You do not get extra credit for attending a class that you are supposed to be attending. Can I do extra credit to pass the class? Today is more that I'll skip to the end. You just took the funds to improve your grade. I was planning on doing extra credit. I don't offer extra credit. So, what are my chances then for passing your class? I don't have my grad book with me, but based on what you have just told me, you don't have a chance in hell of passing my class. You only passed one out of four essays, didn't turn in the majority of your homework, and left the final early to make a phone call, rather than finishing the test. Not only have you barely done any work this semester, you never once tried to get help or improve your grade. That's not true, I just asked to do extra credit. And you won't let me. You are a terrible teacher. I'm going to write a bad review of you on the Rate My Teacher website. Which reminds me, you guys should fill out the online uh, course evaluation forms. You can write a good review or a bad review. It really doesn't matter because nobody's going to see it except me. Um, thank you all for being here. I will see you tomorrow at this time. I have a question. Go for I, it. I know it was asked in the chat. I don't know if you had responded or not, but is Group Project 2 like still a thing? Oh, no. We're going to not do that. Okay. I just wanted to I'll make sure everybody gets full credit for that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.